<clears throat> my dear friends, we are in the topic of generator protection. Uh, it is quite lengthy and uh, quite complex also, as we have been seeing that uh, the earth folds and line folds are also to be protected separately. I mean, single protection cannot sense both the folds. Similarly, there can be folds in the rotor. So before we talk about abnormalities, we have to talk about the folds in the rotor also. Very rare, however, because rotor is a single piece rotor, as I was selling to you. Because uh, the rotor is rotating at the speed at which the rotating magnetic field rotates. Therefore, the slip is zero. Therefore, there are no circulating eddy currents in the rotor. And therefore, you see, there are no eddy current losses. There are no iron losses. Therefore, rotor need not be uh, rather laminated. And it would be difficult also to laminate the rotor because it is rotating at very high speed. 3000 RPM, a very big mass. And again, it is machined because you see that there is to have slots and in the slots there is to, there will be uh, conductors and when the rotor is rotating at 3000 rpm the conductors will tend to go out therefore they are kept in place by uh, special kinds of wedges and there is a quite lot much of uh, centrifugal force on the wedges and uh, the winding is a closed winding. There are only two terminals coming out and you are giving it a DC current because you have to produce a DC flux. It's a unidirectional flux you have to produce. And uh, the interaction of flux and torque produces the EMF. And if the circuit is closed, the current is passing. But you are producing a large power, 210 megawatts or 500 megawatts. Means uh, for 210 megawatt uh, uh, generators itself, the DC current is of the order of 500 or 600 ampere. Uh, in the generators, which are using sleep rings, you see, there it may not be possible to pass 500 ampere through one pair of sleep rings. There may be multiple pairs and many and two, three, I mean two or four parallel paths through which the, the secret is being passed through the rotor winding. Uh, thus, uh, the possibility of failure of insulation and uh, rotor is uh, mounted on the uh, bearings, thrust bearing on one side and the journal bearing on the other side. These bearings are uh, grounded. Therefore, the if the insulation between rotor conductor and rotor core fails, then there can be an earth fault, which is very rare incidence. But you see, a protection engineer cannot take for granted any rare incidence also. <coughs> because it is uh, costly. The damage is costly and the time spent in repairing the rotor is also costly because you see rotor will be required to be taken out. And to take out the rotor is not an easy job because generator is about five meter long and from five meter long generator using the crane you have to take out the rotor and then repair it. And then once again, when you insert the rotor, uh, you have to roll the rotor and uh, you have to 
check up the dynamic balancing. You see the space, the, the gap between rotor and stator should not vary, should remain constant throughout the rotation at 3000 RPM. So this dynamic balancing is done by very specialized persons. In OK Unit 5, I had seen people because uh, the generator was Russian make and people from Russia had come. And because they are, uh, uh, Russia is a cold country, they were working at night because working at day would not be possible for them. So, if rotor earth fault occurs, it is, it is quite time taking. So, how the rotor earth fault protection is done? You see, very, very important first thing is, uh, you see, there is a field winding. Field winding is supplied to the exciter. Exciter is a DC machine which is mounted on the same shaft as generator. So it is also rotating and it is generating DC current. And through the field breaker, it is the DC current is given to the field winding. So if there is an earth fault, you cannot use a CT to step down the current of 500 ampere to 1 ampere and uh, check that earth fault, sense that earth fault, because in DC transformation is not possible. So rotor earth fault protection becomes quite complex. One of the schemes that can be used is this, that people use a selector switch which has four positions rotor first earth fault balance test and rotor second earth fault it is shown like this in the drawing but it is a rotary switch and it is mounted on generator relay panel in the control room generator is in the turbine floor whereas this switch is in the uh, GRP, Generator Relay Panel. Switch is normally kept on rotor first earth fault position. Earth fault has not occurred, but it is kept permanently on rotor first earth fault position. Now think of the earth fault in field winding. You see, if the earth fault occurs in the field winding, it has no effect because there is no return current, because field winding is not grounded anywhere. You see, stator winding was grounded, so first earth fault also had a meaning. Whereas here, the first earth fault does not carry any meaning. It does not carry any current path, and therefore generator can keep on, keep on running for years together if second earth fault does not occur. If second earth fault does not occur. But, First earth fault has occurred and then second earth fault occurs means that much part of the field winding between first earth fault and second earth fault is shorted and heavy current will pass through that shorted path. Heavy current will pass means that the flux linkages distribution is unequal imbalance and rotor is rotating that imbalance would cause heavy vibration in the rotor to to the worst case uh, the rotor would foul with the stator at 3000 rpm you can imagine very heavy damage would occur right uh, that is the problem, I mean, that is the consequence of second earth fault. First earth fault has no meaning. Therefore, when first earth fault occurs, people are sounded, people are alarmed. Only alarm is sounded. So you see, you can see that when first earth fault occurs, what is the circuit? Field winding positive. Then field winding negative, 
right? At field winding positive, a wire is connected to rotor first earth fold position. And at rotor first earth fold position only 64 F1 is in the circuit. You can see the hashed portion. The portion which is hashed, it is shown like this. That means rotor first earth fold position, the, that, that bar is connected to 64 F1. But it has no meaning when first earth fold has not occurred because 64 F1 is grounded. The another end of 64 F1. 64 is ground relay and F1, F means field and 1 means first earth fold. So 64 F1 is grounded, but it has no meaning till the time earth fold occurs. But once the earth fold occurs, the path is complete. Path is complete like this. See, path is complete like this. That means 64 F1 will operate. It is a DC current. There is no question of capacitive current. Right? Therefore, 64 F1 is very sensitively set. Very sensitively set to the tune of about 1 milliampere. Even if 1 milliampere passes, 64 F1 will operate. It is like a measurement in bridges. We are, we are setting the galvanometers to microamperes. You might be knowing. So here we are setting it at 1 milliampere. <coughs> if the first earth fault occurs, it will certainly cross 1 milliampere. 64 F1 will operate. And operation of 64 F1 will energize 2 by 64 F1. 2 bar 64 F1 means it's a timer. We wait for about 4 or 5 seconds. Just like that, because you see, it should not be unnecessarily sounded for some flimsy reasons. So we wait for some time, few seconds, and then that timer sounds an alarm, and in the annunciation board, there will be a, a mark that rotor first earth fault has occurred. So once the rotor first earth fault has occurred, and the in charge engineer sees that the rotor first earth fault has occurred. He knows that nothing is going to happen. So he changes the switch to balance position. This selector switch he changes to balance position. When you change the selector switch to balance position, you can see that positive and negative are connected to the uh, Potentiometer P1, fixed resistor R, potentiometer P2, and from there, there is an inductor, and then there is 64 F2. Sorry, before 64 F2, there will be G, galvanometer, and galvanometer is connected to fine, medium, and coarse controls. So you start with coarse control first. So there the resistance is I. So galvanometer will not be damaged. And then uh, it is taken to the, uh, uh, I mean, if you see, it goes to ground. The another terminal of that fine medium and coarse control has the position you can see that is connected and it is going to ground. So. On one side, on field winding, the ground fault has occurred, first earth fault, and here that is a ground. So if you if you see this circuitry, if you plot this circuitry in a different way, the circuitry is like this. The circuitry is like this. F1 and F2, two parts of the field winding. In between somewhere the earth fault, first earth fault has occurred. P1. P1 is a uh, potentiometer. It is also two parts, X part and Y part. You have adjusted. You can adjust. It's variable. Right? You can, P2 also you can vary. R is a fixed resistance. And inductor is there. Inductor is there because you see, 
while you are switching on can you switch on can you switch on the um, switch from uh, uh, rather first earth fall to balance position there is this connection in meanwhile so there will be heavy surge of current so that would damage the galvanometer so heavy surge of current high frequency surge ldi by dt will be ldi by dt will be very large and therefore current through galvanometer will be small so galvanometer is protected but this galvanometer is not balanced <coughs> because the earth fault has occurred first earth fault has occurred so you have to balance the galvanometer balance the galvanometer means you have to arrive at a null point zero current should pass through galvanometer so by adjusting p1 and p2 you adjust the null point you adjust the null point once you adjust the null point and you you are sure that there is no current passing through the galvanometer then you take from balance to test position if you see when you take from balance to test position all other things are same only galvanometer is replaced by 64f2 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 is connected to test and rotor second second earth fold position both so it is in test also so now you change your selector switch the engineer will change the selector switch from balance to test position test position means what now g is not in the circuit 64f2 is in the circuit in the same in same circuit this circuit this circuit at d there will be 64f2 we know that there is no current is passing therefore through 64f2 also current will not pass and 64f2 will not operate but it is also quite possible you see protection engineer thinks of this possibility also that galvanometer may be damaged and it was showing wrong null point it was showing wrong null point some current was passing it was not rather zero was not properly balanced in galvanometer zero has to be balanced before uh, those who have done the experiments in measurement classes first you balance the zero point there is a knob given you have to adjust galvanometer at zero point with no current passing you have to adjust at zero point if that is not done and then 64 f2 current will pass so 64 f2 will operate but protection will not operate protection will not operate because protection will not operate because 64 f2 will give the trip command only on rotor second earth fault not on test position because the hest portion in dc control circuit once again this hest portion is there so in test position you are simply testing whether 64 f2 operates or not you are you are just checking and then you take to rotor second earth fault position now second earth fault has not occurred therefore 64 f2 will not operate 64 f2 will not operate 64 f2 will operate only when rotor second earth fault and 64 f2 is also uh, set at 1 milliampere a very sensitively set 64 f2 will immediately instantaneously it's a very fast one cycle relay it will immediately operate and initiate class a trip command it will initiate class a trip command this is how rotor earth fault is sensed in in generators because it's a dc circuit it becomes complicated so with this my friends i wanted to talk only one protection at a time because if i talk many protections at a time it would be difficult to digest because i know that the protection is not taught to this extent generator protection because uh, i am working with different universities in the syllabus 
there is one chapter on apparatus protection. Apparatus protection means generator, transformer, induction motor and bus zone. All four. And they probably give four hours to these four units. I need for generator protection alone about, you see, we will be going for 10 videos. So I need for generator protection alone five to six hours. Examples aside, if I have to solve examples there, I am not solving the examples in these video classes. So I used to take roughly eight to 10 lectures for generator protection. I used to take some 60 lectures for power system protection in my college, BVM Engineering College. And circuit breakers, we had kept in another subject. So circuit breakers were not part of power system protection. Uh, circuit breakers were in another subject, which was switch gear. It was not full subject. It was half a subject was for 50 marks and then we made it full in which circuit breakers were taught and we were teaching advanced power system production in which we were teaching uh, numerical delays and all. So totally we were taking about 100 hours to teach the full subject power system protection and switch gear. Uh, that much nobody is doing. In IIT, one professor was telling that anything which talks of electrons, he was joking, he was telling in a joke, that any, anything which talks about electrons is in electrical engineering. So, power system protection in IIT is power system protection, circuit breakers, power system stability and general power system that is short, long, medium transmission lines. So that has to be taught in one subject. And one subject means three hours per week and usually 15 to 16 weeks are available in a semester. So within about 45 hours and in which there will be holidays also, in which there will be exams also. So hardly you will get 12 hours and you have to complete all these things. So, to learn industrially, uh, what is generator protection, what is transformer protection, quite a long time is required. And I have no limit of time. We are, we are private people, so I have no limit of time. So I'm trying to go into the details of generator protection. Probably many of the viewers might not have learned to this tune. And if you learn, you may you might be needing also some of some friends are working in generator. Once I have started generator, I'm getting many comments that uh, it is very good that you have started this topic because we are working with generator. We are working with commissioning of generator. We are working with operation of generator. And we are not knowing these concepts. People are doing work. That's okay. Doing work means somebody teaches that if this happens, you have to operate this switch. That is different thing. But then why you are doing this thing? What is the reason? What is the concept being that? That people are not knowing. So that I am trying to do that I'm trying to share with you. And if you share to, if one person who views, shares to at least 10 other persons, then it will multiply. Then it will go to many people in the world. It is difficult by one person to uh, meet one lakh or 10 lakh or one crore persons who really need the knowledge. So through this, uh, medium of uh, YouTube. Adapt Me is coming to you. So please stay tuned with Adapt Me. Please subscribe our channel. Please like the videos. And most important, 
please share these videos to as many technical friends. As many technical friends of yours. So that people know what is really power system protection. So we are in the generator protection. Rotor protection is complete and then we will start with abnormalities. Till then, my friends, thank you so much for hearing me patiently. Very short video, probably hardly 20 minutes. It will not take good long time. Please go through the whole video. So thank you so much and goodbye.